like a fireman, like the super kid focused one. But I really liked him in Blockers. That it was excellent in that for what that movie was. And yes. Trainwreck. I like him in Trainwreck. I agree. I hundred percent. I would just. I'm very curious to see him do more acting. I'd like to see him do a serious movie, but his comedy is great, so I'm super into that. Absolutely. What other news is there, John? So I don't really have news. News. Well, okay. Just a. Uh, just some free publicity, I guess, for things I love and you love. Well, you love at least two of these things. Okay. What are these publicities? Uh, so Magic the Gathering, they're doing a secret layer, which is a limited time offer, but you're guaranteed the product. You just got to purchase it from their site. And it's, it's a collection of cards. Usually it's like four to six cards for like 30 to 40 bucks, depending but they're like special art treatments or look very different or have some, some guest artists. Okay. So this one has a couple that should be on our radar. Okay. Uh, Jen Bartel, you know her, you I love do. her, love her. Great work on Blackbird, Jim, the holograms, uh, Batman, black and white, black Is Panther. Blackbird. You mean black canary? I mean, Blackbird. Blackbird. Okay. For which she won an Eisner. Oh, that's right. I was thinking black. Okay. Yes, she is incredible. All good. Yes. So she has one. And for the uh, the magic inclined people here, the notable cards in that are probably Bloom Tender and Mesa Enchantress. They all look gorgeous. And the other one is Fiona Staples. Hey! Of course. Uh, yeah. Of Saga Archie fame. She's incredible. She also has one as well. Also, she has one as well. Also, as well. Also, and also with you. Wow! Wow! <laughs> and with your uh, the comics. Noteworthy cards on that one are probably Soul Scar Mage, Soccer Tribe Elder, and uh, uh, Dry to the Elysian Grove are the ones that I'm excited about for that one. Very cool. But no the idea art what those cards fantastic. are, but I'm interested in the art. That's fair. The art is, and that's why I'm bringing it up here, is because the art is just stellar. On both of their collections. Sweet. We'll have to repost that to uh, so, our socials. This is why people should hire us to do sponsorships. Because we do, because we're good at it. I'm generally excited about, about this product. And you, I'm you deciding know how I'm many to, to buy from sell myself. out and talk about products that I'm not excited about, but I'll talk about it with this, as much excitement as well. Give us money. <laughs> we love your products. <laughs> if Magic, if Wizards of the Coast ever gave us money to do anything, John, I think that might kill you. <laughs> I think your heart might explode. I'm in. Let's yeah. go. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, that closes on July, I believe, 23rd. Very cool. And that's just available on their website? Yeah, it's a secret layer dot wizards.com. Support the artists. If you like art, you give artists money. Very cool. Notably, both artists have shops and storefronts you can get prints directly i don't know if they're of these images specifically but their artwork is of course available on their website in the past have artists who done have done magic cards have they sold have they been allowed to sell their art just as the solo art as well i believe it depends i've had some artists where they're able to sell prints some sometimes the print itself is a card with the back of it being completely blank gotcha and the artist will sign it like a like an artist proof and sometimes Wizards owns the image oh, and okay. they cannot duplicate the image. It just okay. depends on the individual contract. So we'll be on the lookout for uh, for the for the artwork and we'll see if it ever comes out in print form. That would be great. Then you can yeah. let you know about that as well. Very cool. What other news do we have, John? That is uh, oh, 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 oh. So did you get a chance to check that check out that thing I told you I put in the chat or no? I'm guessing you had a very busy day. I did not, yeah. For those who are unaware, I am in process of moving, moving house right now. So it's been very exhausting. So no, I did not. What uh, what was it that you put in the chat? So it was a clip from Kind of Funny Games Daily mm -hmm. from Monday, Tuesday, from Tuesday, the 22nd of June, in which there was an article that said Rocksteady, they're announcing a that th there's a listing, there's a job listing. Okay. And based on tweets Rocksteady liked, it, and the, the I think director liked, it is heavily, uh, it's not exactly a leap in logic 
to draw the conclusion that they are making developing a Superman game. Oh, yes, let's go. And what the host Greg Miller brought to light was like, this would be the third Superman game Rocksteady has been developing. The other two have been canned. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, that does give me a little bit of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Ground, I guess, to stand on where I can get my head out of the clouds because if they've done two and they've both been canned, I shouldn't get my hopes up too much, but hopefully that means that they've already got some stuff. But however, every time that's like millions of dollars. (laughs) Right. So like there's a high incentive to produce a product. Uh, but this also does shed to light why Rocksteady games are few and far between. And we've had nothing since Arkham Knight. That's true. That is true. I, I got to tell you, I could not, I could not be more excited for a Superman game. That's actually playable. And I love Rocksteady's game. So that would be, I'd be very willing to, it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination for me to say that that's going to be a good game. Like yeah. I haven't, if you get I a chance, like their check out that games. rant. Okay. Cause it is a plus maybe S tier, but yeah, it's that, that was the actual news bit from it. Is okay. that Rocksteady is all signs are heavily pointing to, we don't usually talk about speculation, but like it really, really looks like they're pointing that they're developing a Superman game. All but announced. Hey man, I'm super into it. Let's go make it, make it, maybe let me play it. Uh, I'll play test it. I'll have a good time. It'll be great. As long as it's, hey, as long as they, you know what? No, they do have to have a mission where he flies through rings as a joke. That would be hilarious. Or just a reference. Maybe not like a mission. Like, oh, that's just worse than that time that Luthor made me fly through all those rings. That are like on TV show, like a game trailer and it's just someone flying through rings. Oh my God. Just something. Just You, you, you have, have to, to make something. that joke, right? Because <laughs> you don't have to technically reference the game, right? Because that's a different company. That'd be funny. Be very, very into that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean... So- not every reference needs to be as natural as Civil War II. You just got to throw it out there. God, we were doing so well, John. <laughs> I know. I know. That's why I made it a point. Uh, that's like four or five episodes without saying point. it. You're the worst. I was, was cleaning, I was cleaning up and moving and packing up my comic books, and I found Civil War II comics. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Captain America versus Black Panther variant cover. I'm like, why do I have this? This is from it's like a good cover. 12 years ago, it feels like. A thousand years ago. It's a real good cover. It was a great cover. It's great, great cover for a terrible book. Ahem. There's A-hem. quite a lot of those. <laughs> what is the other thing, John, that I that you care about that you think I care about? Or were those the two things? Uh, that was it. The three were Fiona Staples, Shem Bartel, and Magic the Gathering. Let's go. And then Superman. Very cool. Well, yeah. Light news week, everybody, but depending on when this comes out, uh, we'll see if more news has dropped by then, but it's too late. We've already made the episode. Hmm. Oh, well, let's we'll live with it. But let's, if that's the case, John, let's just jump right into the book in the pull list. Here's your pull list. This week on the pull list, we're reading The Backstagers, written by James Tenney IV, illustrated by Ryan Sig. Uh, Sige, S-Y-G-H. I apologize if I spelled, I know I said that wrong, so I apologize. I would guess Sig, but I have no way of, no rhyme or reason I can explain as to why that's the case. Right. Uh, Colors are done by Walter Biamonte, letters by Jim Campbell, and cover is done by Veronica Fish. Hey. Hey. Uh, This book is great and wonderful and cute and fantastic, and I love it, and I'm so happy we read it. Same. Same. Right. And that's the book's the premise. This week. <laughs> the book's premise is what leapt out at me. Yeah. As a theater kid alum myself. Like this this really spoke to me. And the book is a delight. Magical theater kids, let's go. I'm a big fan. Uh let's just jump right into it. It opens up with a boy named Jory, and he's complaining to his mom that he doesn't want to do after school activities at the school that he hates because there's boys here and boys fart and there's so much farting and it's the worst and he hates it. And he's not wrong. Boys are the worst. I don't like them. I can't blame him for being bummed out for hanging out uh, after school with a bunch of boys. And his mom's like, just do, you got to do something. You have to do some kind of club. You have to do something that gets you just to meet people. And I super sympathize with that. I think it's a great idea for, you know, kids to have a little bit of forced socialization 
and it gets them oh, yeah. to you know develop social skills and things like that. And your know, mom's like, hey, do whatever you want, play sports. You can sing. I do not care. It does not matter. Just pick something. He's like, oh, I guess I could try the drama school. He's like, well, there's this one cloak that sounded neat. And she's like, great. Why don't you go for it? He's like, well, I don't know if it's going to be right for me. And she goes, hey, you're going to know. It'll feel right. Just give it a shot. He's like, okay. And he's, he's a nervous wreck. And he's walking over to the school at St. Genesis, Genesius, Genosis. Where Genesis. There's a bunch of clones. Genesis. Genesius Auditorium. And he's going to join their drama club. And there's this horrible little pencil headed creature running around. And it's really cute. And that's a, that is a tool rat. And I love it. And we're going to meet them in just a minute. By pencil headed, there are pencils of various colors protruding from its head. Not like it was hurt or injured by these pencils. No. Like they just, they're there. It's just part of him or her. It's great. He walks over to the drama club. He's like, hey, I was just wondering if I could join the drama club. And nobody pays any attention to him. And then they, he's like, okay, oh, okay I guess I'll just go. And then snap, spotlight. The McQueen brothers, Kevin and Blake, tell him that, hey, they are the most important people here. And they're the most... I read this as Lark and Sparrow from Dungeons and Dragons. That's fair. That's very fair. I, the voice in my head, they were both James from Pokemon. James? Just like straight up as the Team Rocket, Jesse James. Oh, yes. I can see that. Both that ridiculously over the top, foppish. Like that's entirely how this read. Did you get like kind of weird, creepy Blossom vibes from this? Or is that just me? Blossom or the siblings from High School Musical, like, they're way too close. I never saw High School Musical. It's... I did. And it's fine. <laughs> it's, I watched like, it when I it came of, out. I kind of want to, only because I've heard great things by High School the Musical, the series. Oh, I haven't heard nothing about the show. I've heard that show is excellent. The problem I have with so the High School Musical check now... It out. The, the movie is that they didn't let Zach Efron sing. Someone else sings for him in that movie. And I'm like, he can, he's a but he good plays singer. basketball. He can't be good at two things. Right. But here's the thing. Zach Efron's not good at basketball, but he is good at singing <laughs> <laughs> as an actor. I, like I didn't get that. Like let him sing. He's a legitimately good singer. And then he sings in the other movies in the rest of the series, but they don't let him sing in the first one. I'm like that's dumb. That's a dumb choice, but whatever. But I can see why. You were saying that at the boss. Like, yeah, these brothers are way too close. Like they get, they way talk cheek to cheek. Very creepy. I don't like it. weird. They uh, tell Joy that he can join their drama club because their senior year, and they've been in leads in every single musical. But they need a crown so he can go join those freaks backstage with the club and the 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 props department. They're the backstagers. They're the, they're the tech crew. Or what's the word for people who are back? Is it just crew? Yeah, crew. Like he, he back in the my crew. day, it was. I don't know. I was never yeah. in theater, despite all of my mannerisms and behavior. Uh, I, ooh, it was great. So when I was there in, 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 in high school, and we, there, was, there were actors, and there was crew, then there was tech. So tech did the lights, the sound, uh, all like marking stage and everything like that. And crew would do the set changes. Okay. So like when you go from scene to scene, they would take the set off and move the set on and make sure props were set. Uh, that whole thing. I was an actor, as obvious, but I was classified as a mutt because I would help with the crew. So when there was a when I was on stage and the set was changing, I would ask if there was like a prop I could help bring back. To just kind of lessen the load a little bit. Because like I'm walking off the stage anyway. I don't yeah. see why I can't help. Good person. So, You're a good person. Yeah. A lot of good friends there. It was it was great. It, this book was such a such a good throwback for me. Like I I adored this book. So, 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 so much. So Jory goes backstage to find uh, so in this book, in this school, the backstagers do all that. They are tech, they are crew, they're everything. They do all the work. And he goes backstage and he's looking around, and he sees like this clubhouse style thing with like a faux brick wall darts in the wall, a bunch of posters and computers and broken toys and meme references. I believe that's the poggers guy. It is. 
And Which then you is, have the internet well, kid. Yeah. There's Doge. Doge. You have the smiley face from the internet. Which people, people just signed the wall. Like it, 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 This all was a big throwback. It was great. There's a lot of cool references in this book. And he goes in and he's like, oh, so hey, does, I, I'm looking for like a prop. Is there anybody here? And there's nobody there. When all of a sudden a small child runs out screaming, I won't let you hurt them. I'll defend you to my last breath. And he's like, what is, what is are you Sasha doing? the definitive goodest boy, period? Sasha is the best part of this book. I would die for Sasha. I would absolutely kill for Sasha. Absolutely. Zero S- questions asked. Sasha needs to be protected at all costs. He is. A He's sweet a cute, little tiny little boy with a smile practically as big as his head. Widest eyes. He's adorable. I love him so much. And he has a friend with him that he's trying to defend. And his friend is this horrible little red demon creature who has a wrench like, in yeah, his like tail a, and nuts and like his little gremlin thing. Nuts and bolts in his skin. He's great. He's a tool rat, like I mentioned earlier. And tool rats don't belong out in with the regular the other people. And uh, is it Aziz? Is that yes. That? Aziz comes out like, hey, no, no, you got to bring him back. And Jory's like, what is going on? He goes, come here, help me pick up this wood and let's go. He's like, okay. Aziz is very much the opposite, where he is serious, no nonsense. This has to get done. Also great. Everyone's great in the backstage. There's not a bad backstage, and I love them all. So they go back into this room that seemingly goes into a hallway into nowhere and into like space. It's insane. There's no way, like it's like an MC Escher painting back here. And you have you have uh, Sasha's holding this tool rat, and he's like, "I love him. He's my best friend." And Aziz is telling Jory to follow him with the planks of wood and the buckets of paint. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Jory's like, "I don't. What's happening?" He's like, "Just shut up. There's no time. Follow me." So he's just whisked into this magical world with no anything, no provocation, no f- like it, foresight, no insight, no anything. It's insane. I love it. And they get back there and they see Captain Handsome. Uh, his name is Hunter. Oh, Hunter. Hunter is the Hunter. Hunter's the builder. He's a large man with coiffed hair, uh, a little bit of a pop belly, but big old arms and big old legs. He's just, he's great. And I love Hunter. And so does Jory. Jory's a big Hunter fan. Mm-hmm. And he gets, Jory gets back there and he's like, so what's, what are you guys doing? And he sees another guy named Beckett and Beckett is, being an evil genius, evil scientist, that literally said, the power, the power. And he's like, hey, let's go. Beckett, lights. It's like, oh, fine. So Beckett clicks on lights while, with the wires he's fiddling with. And as the lights come on, you see hundreds of these tool rats on the floor. And as he's like, yeah, we're all going to die. George's like, what? What's happening? And Sasha's like, I will protect you, Fredo. It's so cute. <laughs> they are tr- they build a they quickly build a little corral for the tool rats to go into, but the tool rats won't go in because they're tool rats. They don't listen. And in fact, they just keep duplicating. It's great. They're great. They start to attack Jory, but they don't actually attack Jory. They just attack his jacket, which is a red jacket. And Jory goes, "Oh, they they like red things. Interesting." Which is also why Frendo, who has a hat now, by the way. Friendo has a hat. Uh, Sasha just put a hat on him. It's a just tiny little little bowler hat or something. It's it's so great. Uh, Friendo is a red tool rat, and he's been attacked by the other tool rats. We find out that the tool rats just love the color red. So Joy runs in with red paint, and he paints the enclosure red and the floor of the enclosure red, and the tool rats are like, yo, let's go. And they sprint in as hard as they can into the enclosure. They are now corralled and safe and away from everybody, and it's great. Everyone's saved. And Hunter picks up Jory. He's like, you did such a good job. You're my savior. And he hugs him. And there's like the anime pink background behind them. And they're clearly in love. And it's great. And they bring yeah, all there's the... like star twinkles and bubbles. Like it's ridiculous. It's I love awesome. They're blushing. I love it so much. They take the tool rats then to a room that is just red lights. Because back here in the backstage, there's a bunch of rooms. It's kind of like the room of requirement in Harry Potter. There's a million different rooms. There's a million different uses. And it's kind of whatever you need at the time. But if you go too far or you go the wrong way, you could be in trouble. 
or at least that's what it's, these stage managers tell them. Yeah, it's it's less convenient than a requirement. Like all the rooms are there and you have to get there, but the rooms are always shifting and moving. Yes. So it's very difficult to retrace your way back. The room of requirement in Harry Potter is what you need shows up. This is what you need is there. Better find it. And you can easily leave and go to Hogwarts proper from the room of requirement. Oh, There's no absolutely. danger in leaving the room of requirement. So Jory, after completing, you know, after meeting new friends and, uh, you know, unofficially joining the backstagers, is like, oh, yeah, I came down here for like a crown. And they're like, oh, yeah, here's this prop. You go ahead. But, uh, you know, you're the feel Bishop free to come Ciara. back. Feel free to come back. Because they're doing le- less terribles. Le Terrible by, of, he- by Hector Vugo. I don't think they pronounce amazing. it Le Terrible. I think they say less terribles. That's how much of a knockoff it is. And I love it. In my head Probably. canon, they don't pronounce in my head canon, they would pronounce it less miserables as opposed to Les Miserables. And I think that's hysterical because they're the worst. Because the two McQueen brothers are terrible actors. But they're the loudest. What are you talking are the, about? They're the best actors. They're the loudest. They're and terrible the, people. Have the most powerful dad. They're terrible people. Yeah. They're the best actors. Well, yeah, that's true. Most actors are that way, right? Look at you, Tom Hanks. Uh, Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, people are going to think I'm QAnon. I was kidding. I love Tom Hanks. He's great. <laughs> he didn't do anything wrong. He's fantastic. Uh, so the next day, Jory comes back. He's like, hey, I want to be a backstager. And everyone's like, yes, that's awesome. We so want you to join. And Sasha's the best. And he's like, yay! And I love him. I love him so much. But then you see the backstage door says unsafe with these scary eyes in it. Ooh. Yeah, there's a menacing face in the shadows beyond the door. And act one. Then we go to act two. And the McQueen brothers are continuing to do their usual nonsense. So, Everything's terrible. This is the worst. They're way overdoing it. And the backstage is like, what's wrong? You said to build the rainbow barricade, and we did. And it's the, if you've seen Les Miserables, it's the scene, or it's, it's clearly referencing the scene where the uh, rebellious French build the wall of wood and trash and basically like debris to prevent the uh, the police from hurting them. It's like they, where they make their final stand. And that's what this is supposed to be. And But it's like legally distinct. It's great. But the McQueen brothers are mad because it doesn't have enough colors. In fact, it needs new colors, never before seen colors. Because there's supposed to be uh, rainbows, you know, hundreds of colors. But we count maybe 60. And so they say, you need to go more paint. You need to get this, fix this. More colors, more colors, more colors. And Hunter says, okay, fine. We will go get that. We'll have to go backstage hey, and find suck. that. <laughs> actors suck. So they go back, go backstage, try to find it. And George's like, yeah, I have some questions. I was going to try to narrow it down to like one or two, but I came with 136. And I wrote them down on this book. And Hunter's like, oh, give me that. We're both adorable and I love you. And the pink anime, you know, twinkles behind them again. Every time they touch, that happens. And but Beckett swipes it and is like, let me see this. Nope, don't know these answers. I mean, anyway, you don't have the time. <laughs> they go in and they see that Sa- Sasha is unintentionally beating Aziz in a video game so bad it's making Aziz cry. And, and he's like unlocking achievements while he's doing it. <laughs> it says, am I winning? <laughs> yes, Sasha, you're winning. Missile launched destruction imminent. <laughs> Yay! I'm going to say hi to your friends. You died. Yay! <laughs> it's so great. I love Sasha. I love Sasha so, much. so much. If anyone hurts Sasha, I will come for you. I have no particular set of skills, but I will find people who do. <laughs> Hunter and Joy are like, all right, cool. Let's go find that paint for more colors. Here, I, I know. We'll go to this one room that I found. It's uh, somewhere around here. And after a while, they get lost. Jory? Would you like to join me? It's heck yes, I would. It's very cute. I love this book. So they go into the uh, backstage area and they're looking for the paint. And Hunter's like, oh, I totally know where this paint is. I'm totally going to find it. (laughs) And they enter this one room that he's convinced is the paint room. (laughs) It's not. It's the room where where the birds are having a tea party. Yeah. This is where they get into the the details about how the backstage works uh they've mentioned the stage managers whom we have not met and how everything is always shifting and it's next to impossible to get back 
Yes. In fact, there was a group, or allegedly a group in 1987 who got lost back here and they've never come back and they've been gone forever because they found the wall spiders. And if you find the wall spiders, they're going to eat you. And that's bad. We don't want that to happen. But they do end up finding the paint room after running away from one of the wall spiders. And they found this is where the wall spiders actually live. They're not just down here. They live in this specific room. So they the, grab some the echo spiders. Echo spiders, sorry. Because yes. you got to be quiet because they'll try to mimic your voice and that's how they'll find you. It's really scary, actually. We find out the echo spiders aren't that bad. They're kind of cute, actually. They're kind of super cute, even for spiders. So they grab some of the paint and they run away from an echo spider. The echo spider, uh, they distract it with some of the paint running away. But it's not enough. The echo spider continues to come after them. And that's when the stage managers show up with peanut butter because echo spiders hate peanut butter, of course. Because it's sticky, and they don't like other things that are sticky. So they scare them this away. This all happened because Hunter was trying to impress Jory by showing him how deep into the, the backstage they can really go all by himself. It's great. The bravado, the, the high school, you know, I'm invincible mentality. It's very, very apparent, and I love it. The backstage manager, the managers are, I thought they were two adults. But they are, I guess, so did I. They're, they're high school students. And, they, and I know that because they talk about graduating in the fourth issue or third issue. I was like, wait, wait what? These so aren't two like, adults? From here, from here, I was like, huh. I mean, stage managers back when I was in theater were also students, usually senior. Usually it's like, you know, paying your dues by doing crew all four years and you did a great job. You get stage managers, kind of how it went. But it made sense when it was revealed that they are in fact students to be fair, they're depicted as like pretty tall compared with other kids. And one has, and like a one beard. has a full beard, full beard, which now that I think about it, that does happen in high school. There are plenty of people with full beards. They usually are on the not football in my team. Catholic high school. That really? Got shaved off immediately. You could not have facial hair. Oh, you couldn't have one, but the ability to grow one still existed. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I you just, that. I just, you know, I was just referring to, those, to shave it off. I was so referring to those that physically can grow a beard in high school, and I still can't grow a beard, but they exist. Those, those horrible people. I hate you. Those lucky people. I hate you. I don't hate you. I just want to be you. So the back, the stage Jealousy. managers bring them back. <laughs> they have the paint, <laughs> and the paint is all these new colors that you can't even imagine. They're so beautiful. It's great, and they have the paint. And it's all good. Everything's good. And the state manager like, oh, man, you could have gotten lost back there. And George's like, oh, just like the people from 87, right? And they're like, that's not real. And he's like, but I saw and they go, that's not real. That's a silly story we tell people. But like he says it and like white roses appear around him. And like it's, it's super anime. It's, but it's like cute. I love it. And that ends act two. Act three is five days before a curtain. And this is the Beckett issue. We get to find out about Beckett, and it's a good issue. I like this issue a lot. Did I cut out? Did you still hear me? I can hear you. You're cutting out intermittently the entire time. But yeah. since you're recording, it's fine. My connection is up and down, so I saw that's why I asked. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. So issue three is the Beckett issue, and we find out a lot of cool things about Beckett, but we find out mostly that he is, he is all of tech. By himself, essentially. He runs all the lights. He runs all of the sounds. Everything. He's got lights it down to science. Sounds, which is a lot. It's Arguably, a lot, a lot. it's impossible <laughs> to do it by yourself. But he has done it. At least well enough for now. And he's so excited because the true greatest actor in the entire production, Bailey Brentwood, is coming. Uh, she's an actress. She's from the all-girls school. This is an all-boys school. She comes in from the all-girls school to be in productions with the all-boys school. She's the lead actress, and she's really good at acting. And she's also the, according to this little square underneath her name, the coolest girl in the world. And Bentley I have no has evidence to review this claim. Yes, and Bentley has a huge <laughs> crush on her. So the stage managers are like, hey, just so you know, Got a lot to do. This is Tech it's, Week. This is war. John, can you describe Tech Week? Oh, man. Tech Week is the week of slash before opening night. It is actors can in no way still be on book. 
everything what has to be mean? done. The lighting ha- on book is where you are at practice allowed to have your script. I'm sorry. Yeah. So on book is where you have your script at practice, reading your lines off off book is where you no longer need that. And you have your lines memorized. Gotcha. So tech week is like everything has to be perfect. All the, the lighting has to be all planned and figured out by that point. The audio has to be all planned and figured out by that point. Sets are done. Uh, full dress props. Everything's all sorted. You're basically trying to do flawless runs the production the entire week. It's, it's a mess. So in America, it's in, called Tech Week, but in Europe, it's called the Final Countdown. Do 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 do. See if I do a monotone, we can't get tagged for copyright infringement, so it's fine. That was an awful joke, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm glad you like it because I don't know if any <laughs> listeners will. But anyway, Tech Week, big deal, and you know everything's got to be second to this. Your family's second to this. Homework is second, and that's what one of the stage managers says in the other. Uh, other stage manager, Jamie, says, well, more like seventh. Goes, no, priority two, Jamie. We need to be role models. And Jamie goes, what about your AP English paper? How's that going? And the other stage manager has completely forgotten that he has a paper due. Whoopsies. Cute little aside. That's how I was like, wait a second. They're in high school? They're in high school. Yeah. Which makes sense. Because like I said, stage managers were students as well. They're just drawn to look so much older than the rest. Which, thinking back in high school, there were definitely people who looked way older than other people. Especially freshmen to senior, there was people who were so old in comparison, just by their looks. Heck, there were freshmen who looked super old in comparison to other freshmen. Yeah. High school's the still weirdest of times. I we, got carded like... We used to look baby face. Cool. It's, it's true. I got carded a year maybe two ago for buying the last of us oh, so like oh that's bad yeah, yeah. I got you have to be 17 to buy that without a super, with, uh, unsupervised when i was yeah uh, when i was 25 i got carded for an already movie and i was mad uh i also got carded for seeing it wow yep you were in your 30s uh yeah Dude, that's not okay. It's like it's a problem I'm happy I have, but like it's still an inconvenience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so with Tech Week, a lot of assignments are given out. You know, Jory, you're doing this, yes, sir. Uh, Hunter, you're doing this, yes, sir. Uh, Aziz, you're doing this, okay. And Bentley, you know, he's on tech. You know, he's got to do his stuff. He says, oh, Bentley, I want Sasha to learn from you so that you can teach him, so he can take over. And what's important is Bentley. So we said that he does music and lights, all sounds and lights all by himself. Now that's impossible it's to do. Beckett, he has gotten it. What did I say? Bentley. I'm changing his name to Beckett in my brain. Got to remember that. Beckett. I'm going to redo that whole thing because I don't like that. So with Tech Week, there's assignments given out. You know, Sasha, or not Sasha, uh, Aziz, you're doing this. Hunter, you're doing this. Jor, you're doing this. Beckett. You know, you've got that tech stuff on lockdown. Make sure you teach Sasha. And back it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Teach Sasha so that Sasha can take over. Whoa, that's my thing. And it is Beckett's thing. It's to the point where Beckett got, like we said, he does sound and he does lights by himself. That is impossible to do alone. He has made a new system that is so advanced and so complex that Beckett is able to do everything by himself. And it's really well run it's his thing it's like his niche in the world and he's kind of not okay with sharing his little niche it's his it's his thing and yeah they elaborate on that more in the book where he likes friend time friend time is great but he also like craves and needs alone time and that's why tech and him being the only tech uh crew member is perfect because he can have friend time and then he can have alone time so now adding the Sasha element and kind of throws him off and kind of upsets him a little bit. But stage manager's like, hey man, you're gonna, it's gonna be you and it's going to be Aziz taking over as stage managers next year when we graduate. Like it's basically locked up. You're too good at this job to not be a stage manager. So I appreciate you like doing tech, but we need to be able to transition you off of tech at some point. And something I personally have struggled with is delegation. Yeah. Beckett definitely doesn't want to delegate. He wants his responsibility it's easier to have if I just do ownership. 
Right. That's what he wants. And I struggled with delegating as well. So then we, we see that, uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So Bailey comes in and Bailey is like, oh, back it. I heard that you're the next in line to take over stage manager. That's awesome. You're going to do so good. But, you know, if you train the next guy to be half as good as you, he'll be great too. But I'm going to miss you, you know, up on the lights because you made me look so good freshman year when we did dolls, dolls and dolts, <laughs> which guys and dolls. I love, I love all these references. This it's, is amazing. It's great. You know, it, it was so good when you did the all girls production back when you were at school with me. You know, I've missed you at school. And you're like, oh. Oh, Beckett used to go to the all girls. Oh, Beckett's trans. Super cool. Never at any point is it said out loud or explicitly that he's trans. I just think that's some of the, I talked about John with this uh, before we started recording. I think it's some of the best show don't tell ever. In a comic We know a lot about Beckett and Beckett was a very well-defined character. Excluding being trans and without that being any part of a defining character trait. It is, And that's how you do it. That is correct. I, I think it's great. And we, the way we find out about it is in so, it's such organic way of finding out about it. I think it's great. It is not a plot point at all. It's great. It's That's awesome. how you do it. Uh, he's smitten with Bailey. He's so in love with Bailey. And he's so excited to you know, help. She's the Bailey. coolest girl in the world. And she is. She's got like a crop top. And she's got one of those. What are those called? The piercings where it Beanies? goes. Industrial. Oh. Industrial? Yeah. It goes through like two. It's super sick. Yeah, she's got a cool beanie that stays on her head, but it's slouchy. She's got long black hair. She wears like cool clothes. She's got cool shoes on. She's great. I can see why Beckett's super smitten. So he's like, okay, I got I'm so, it's great. And then he has to go see Sasha and he has to go teach Sasha how to do lights and stuff. And Sasha's like, Are you ready for the best assistant in the universe? And again, I would <laughs> die for Sasha. And I would kill for Sasha. <laughs> And if Sasha ever asked me to do something that I wasn't comfortable with, I would figure out a way to get it done because Sasha, Sasha needs me. And I love Sasha. Oh, he's just so cute. Mm-hmm. He, he, absolutely so adorable. Cute. So already we have Beckett not loving this, but doing it begrudgingly. Tech week begins. He is doing it all on his own. And the stage manager like, hey, you're doing a great job, Beckett, but don't forget, you got to train Sasha. Okay, Sasha, come here. Let me start. And he starts to show him like the ropes a very little bit, but it's cute. You know, he explains like why he does what he does and how the light can be used to set focus on characters. And it's super cool. It's really interesting. It's really awesome. And, and Sasha's taking it in. Sasha legitimately is trying to, to learn. That's what Beckett describes. And then how we power all this is this really cool crystal. And this crystal that I found in the backstage, you know, one of the deepest tunnels that I could get to. This allows us to power it without using any power from the outside world. That's how we have this cool setup that would never work in high school. Because you, you look at some of the lighting and the sound setup and no, this would not work. There's no way they could power this with a high school. This is like millions of dollars worth of electricity and equipment. But this crystal and this naturally, naturally fascinates Sasha. He just goes, invisible power. I must wield the invisible power! And starts hitting all the switches. And he says he was doing it as a joke. And he was. He's just being cute and adorable. And I love him. And I would die for him. And I would kill for him. And he breaks the, the, the crystal on accident. And he goes, oh, that was too much invisible power. And that by breaking, there is a blindingly bright stage. Knocks and over the crystal shattered. Yeah. And Bre- uh, Beckett runs out goes, you're not smart enough to take things seriously. You ruined this. And Sasha... <gasps> Sasha begins to cry and, and it's the worst and I hate it and I love Sasha and I would die for Sasha and I would kill for Sasha and I know if I said that before but I would back at Ritzel, but Bailey, like, are you okay? and Bailey's like yeah dude I'm fine like Jory caught me Jory's like what's up it's like you're sick you're a lifesaver he's like haha <laughs> shucks I am but Bailey's like yeah all good all good again that kid that you're teaching is a mistake but like he's gonna be He's going to be great because he's got you as a teacher. You're doing a great job. And Beckett's like, oh, God, I'm a jerk. I, <sighs> I do admit that like, it's done in such a way to where Beckett is not a monster. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And here's how you know he's not a monster. This is, this is his explanation. He goes, I'm going to read it verbatim because it's really good. It's, I think it's really good character development. Sasha, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get angry like that. It's just this is the one thing that I've ever been able to do right. I'm afraid of giving it up. I'm afraid that without it, I'm just going to fit in nowhere. 
that doesn't change the fact that I said some pretty mean junk and I don't want you to. Sasha? Sasha's gone. And Sasha left a note. <laughs> it says, I'm sorry I broke everything. I'm going to go find a new crystal thingy. And it's got two bears crying on it and it says, love, Sasha. And Sasha went backstage and he left his little guard bear. And his little guard bear has his little cop guard bear. And it's the best. And I love it. It's so sad. <laughs> but he's run off to go find another crystal thingy. And we see some more cool little uh, Easter eggs here. We see a Kermit the Frog drinking tea uh, puppet. Very cute. You see the S that everybody drew in middle school. Like everybody. You see that. And then you see the Legend of Zelda Master Sword. But it's not the Master Sword because it goes the opposite way. It's legally distinct. Very cute. Yeah. And that ends Act 3. Act 4. It is the day of the final rehearsal. And everyone's getting excited. But not the backstagers. The backstagers are worried because Sasha hasn't come back. And it's been a while. It's been, you know, a couple of days. No, it hasn't been a couple of days. It's been at least a day and a few hours. They're really worried. I mean, so worried, in fact, that the stage managers went back. And they've been gone for hours. And they haven't seen him either. And Aziz is... So Aziz is Sasha's, like, best friend. Aziz has known Sasha forever. And Aziz promised Sasha's mom that he would keep Sasha safe. So the fact that this is happening really upsets Aziz because he feels like he let Sasha down. And Aziz is such a sad boy and I love him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this whole cast. This <laughs> cast is amazing. Aziz totally talks like this. There's no time. You just have to go. And it's, and it's unironic to him and it's not just a phase to him, but he wears like Henley t-shirts and ripped jeans and he's great. And one shoe's always untied. And... You know, it's really, and Beckett's like, Aziz, I'm so sorry. You know, Aziz is openly crying and yelling because he's really upset. And Aziz, he goes up to Aziz and goes, I'm so sorry. And he goes to Beckett and he sees that Beckett truly is upset and truly is sorry. And instead of yelling at him, he just hugs him because he's just so upset. And that's when the stage managers come back saying they couldn't find Beckett. Or they couldn't find, they found Beckett. They couldn't find Sasha. They don't know what's going on, but you know, they'll keep looking. And the McQueen's come down and go, that's great and all, but you need to get back upstairs. Like that, but our friend goes, we don't care if you don't get back upstairs, we're going to have you removed. Like you can't just remove the stage crew. goes, oh, can't we? Our dad's on the school board and we will totally find a more talented group of people to come here from Broadway. Like you can't. For money. For money. You can't just do that. You have to have a teacher who would remove us. Because that's why we invited your teacher liaison to come here and watch the rehearsal. And if it gets screwed up, he'll be on our side. There's nothing he can do. And the backstage are like, uh-oh, we have to go. So the stage managers get up and they're, there's nothing they can do. Their hands are tied. It's like, all right, let's just get to the rehearsal. Then we'll go look for Sasha again. Okay, let's go. We got to go do this. So they go upstairs and the other backstage is like, no, we have to go after Sasha. We have to find Sasha now. He needs us. So the four of them take off. The two stage managers are like, oh, God, where are the kids are gone. The other, oh, they're all gone. We have to do this ourselves. Oh, it's going to be so hard. Ugh. Tell you what, I'm going to go run lights. You run everything down here. We can do it. We can do it one time only. You know, we can we can make it through. And they tell each other that they love each other and it's great. And I cannot stress enough how Herculean of a task that is. It's not possible. It's not physically possible. There's no way. It's a lot, a lot. There's no way. There's just not enough human being physically. Because like tech week stuff. is when you're being timed on like your, your set changes, for example. And this is the like, final rehearsal. So insane. So yeah, this, this is the dress rehearsal. Perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the, uh, the stage managers mentioned before they, before the kids go down that they had made it all the way to the patchwork catwalk. And that yeah. was the, that's the farthest down that anyone has ever been, ever, ever, ever. But they couldn't find Sasha. So the kids end up making it down to the... I say kids, but like they're all technically kids. Like None of them are... They're all in high school. So Lately, they are children. The four backstagers who are not the stage managers make it down to the patchwork uh, walkway. And Beckett and Jory realize that they are the lightest. So this patchwork walkway is literally... A catwalk. Is it literally a catwalk uh, like what you would have above a stage or like in sports stadiums, but it's made of like patchwork things like stop signs and rugs and cardboard. And it's clearly not sturdy. So they're like, all right, we think Sasha might be across. 
the let's go walk across and that starts to break. And so the two lightest Beckett and Joy realize they're the only ones who can make it across. They're going to have to go. So they start walking. And Hunter's Jory, like sweating and crying. Please don't die. Beckett says no promises. Because to be fair, he can't promise that. They're going to do their best. They start I to walk. I love how Beckett turns to Jory and was like, if you don't want to go, that's okay. But I am going now. So they start to walk across like he, and you see... Yeah these voices uh, singing songs uh, from Hairspray, from Les Miserables, from other things that I don't know. Do you know all these? Where the actors were the opposite of people? That is the question whether it is... Oh, that's from Shakespeare. That's Macbeth. Yeah. No, it's not. is it Macbeth or is it Hamlet? Macbeth. I'm going to be honest. I just kind of threw a play out there. It's one of the Shakespeare ones. It's <laughs> the one top where, of my head. It's the one where he's got the Yorick skull. Which one is Yorick in it? Is that Hamlet? You know what? I think it is Hamlet. Let's go. I don't need praise. I don't need pity. Uh, other reference. I'm sure there's references that we should absolutely know. See the pretty countryside. Nobody comes. Nobody goes. It's awful. And another hundred people. I don't know. None of them are Hamilton, so I'm kind of lost. <laughs> and they're like, what is... There's voices of people singing. Like It's like... What is that? And as they're noticing these voices, Jory starts to fall through, through the patchwork catwalk. And you hear rip, 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 rip. And not like rip, like rest in peace. Like something is ripping. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all, all the voice, all the ghost voices, you're going to die. Rip, rip. And they're dead and they're dead and they're dead and they're dead. <laughs> That's so mean. You guys are mean ghost voices. And Beckett's like, oh, God, no, it's going to break. I'm so sorry, Jory. And Jory's like, wait, that's not the sound of the catwalk breaking. It's, and you see from off screen, <sighs> only the most strongest thing in the whole wide world, duct tape powers activate. It's Sasha. Sasha's duct tape superhero. With a cute, tiny little baby crown. He's and so he cute. Just, he co- upside down. He like goes beneath the bridge and he uses the power of duct tape. And Save says, jewelry. Funny running into the you around these parts. Wait, what? And Sasha was given this duct tape by his friends. So that, you know, his friends couldn't come back across the catwalk because it was too weak. So he had to fix it for him. And he found another crystal. And that's great. Oh, this is so nice. Everything's great. Oh, my God. His best friend Polaroid gave him some duct tape and he found a crystal. Oh, everyone's so happy. Yay. We can bring Sasha home. But Joy's like, wait a second. This sounds kind of weird. Hmm, I'll have to look into this. Everyone else is just too wrapped up in the fact that they got Sasha back to really yeah. think about what Sasha you're, said. You're cutting out, so I don't know if you said, but the Polaroid was the name. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, and we saw that earlier in the panel where it's like written where it's like written all scary like for 1987. Yes. So bum, bum, bum. that's how Joy recognized it because he had read about the people from 1987. Mm-hmm. They get back and they're like, all right, everyone sit down. And you're like, who's this voice? It's this gruff gentleman who is clearly the teacher liaison for the group. And he said, you boys, you are in a lot of trouble. These two stage managers did something that we didn't know could happen. They held it up for you for the entire first act, first half of the play. You, It's intermission now. You need to thank them with everything. I'm glad you got Sasha back, but you need to get your places and fix this. No more running around you know and like, I like oh, how the first thing he says is anything that way coming here no good yeah like well, how do you know about that stuff he goes well man i was a backstager back in my day before i was a teacher and this whole time jory's like hey, he said the catwalk's been keeping them from coming back what is what is going on this is so weird and the teacher's like something on your mind son i imagine he talks like uh like a like arlie ermy a little bit and he's like, no, 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 I'm, I'll, I'm all good. I was just thinking about something. It flashes back. His brain flashes back to the 1987 group, the name Polaroid, and the duct tape. And he goes, all right, cool. Get to your places. Let's go f- finish this rehearsal. And the teacher clicks the lights off and leaves. And in the standing in the doorway is a, is a boy with a terrifying face. And then he disappears and says to be continued. <gasps> Who gave him that duct tape? So who could come back? He fixed the catwalk for who? It's very scary and ominous. Polaroid. It's Polaroid, yeah. Polaroid clearly is evil now. 
I'm very excited. Uh, I can't wait to read the next volume. Uh, we're not going to read it on this show quite yet, but I, Unless. I'm, I'm going to read it for sure. We could absolutely come back. We, I have no problem coming back. Did we this. both independently purchase yes. the rest of the series? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Because we're good people <laughs> who love good stories. Did you check out the cover gallery? Yeah, the ham- there's uh, Hamilton. There is Amadeus. Little Shop. Little Shop of Horrors. There's, uh, there's, there's three Broadway ones, like specifically like Playbill ones. So Hamilton's the first Playbill one. Little Shop of Horrors is another one. Uh, the I think the second one is in the Heights. Oh, that makes sense. I'm almost okay. positive that's in the Heights, and then the I think the last one's Amadeus. Yeah, that also was makes Amadeus sense. a play. Sure, I don't know. That's crazy. Play there's a there's a lame is one as well because you kind of had to at this point. Yeah, but it's not one of the play. But oh, it is one of the play ones. You're right. You're right. Okay, yeah. it is Amadeus. I'm right. I'm so smart, dude. Killing it, man. I should be uh, a Broadwayman. A Broadwayman? A Broadwayman. I'm looking up the In the Heights one, too. You mean an actor? It is In the Heights. I, God, I crushed it. (laughs) I'm so happy. I was going to guess, like, I don't know. What's what's the one with, like, the the, the paper? The paper. Newsies? Oh, yeah, yeah, Newsies, Newsies. That's, that would have been good. Just because I'm like, that's New York City. Yeah, maybe it's Newsies. Who's to say? It's Washington Heights. It's in the oh, Heights. that's what's in the Heights is. It's Washington. Now I understand. Do you know those three Nickelback albums? <laughs> Nickelback albums? No, I didn't. I thought there were more. <laughs> it's three Nickelback albums. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Keep it easy. This is a Christian Minecraft server, sir. I hate this show. Anyway, <laughs> that'll do it for the poll this week. John, out of 10 stars, uh, I'm giving it 100 stars. How many are you giving it? I was going to say 11 D, but now I think that's too low. 11 D is too low, I think. Yeah. I think we'll compromise at a million. That's fair. Okay. Like I said, we both independently <laughs> bought the entire series. It's so good. It's so good. And I would die for Zaza. It's three volumes. It's not like crazy long either. And it's completed three excited. volumes. That's it. Which I hope they come out with like a backstagers, you know, sophomore year. You know what? If it like, oh, just pull a Degrassi, the just next generation, the new class. It. No, no, no. I'm like you so have Jory, you have Jory that. going to his junior or whatever next, the next year. He's not a senior yet. So you just have like, you have maybe like oh. two of them go to college together. Oh my God. It's Sasha. And, and then we continue. Or Hunter and Jory. No, no, no. Just follow Sasha. See where that ship goes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Just follow, follow Sasha. Sasha. <laughs> If they ever come out with a Sasha plush, I'm buying it and I will save it forever. He's my favorite and I will die for him and I love him. So and it much. would be the greatest plush ever! Duct tape power! He's great. A uh, million stars, bajillion stars. Not There's not enough praise I can give this book. I love it so much. But that'll do it for the podcast this week. So let's wrap things up in the outro. Say bye, John. Bye, John. Podcast this week. Uh, next week, uh, doing what's it called? Doing a movie thing, filming TV. What are we doing? What's it? What are Talking we got? trades, goes to the movies, and also their couches. Yeah. What's what is on the docket? What is on the playbill? The what are we watching next week? So we have three locked in for sure because I think with timing, we may have to take a week off. I got to figure that out sure, scheduling sure. wise. Uh, but for sure, we're doing the most anticipated uh, new comic book related series to come out this spring slash summer. Kicking it off with, that's right, MODOK. Oh, yeah. Very exciting. Uh, Black Widow, as soon as it wraps. Yep. As soon as it's released, we'll yep. be sure to cover that one. And at the end of the month, we'll be sure to have, uh, what do I have for? It may spill into August, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, Invincible. The TV show, the Amazon show. Which I think is the biggest thing we're just not talking about and have not read ourselves. Correct. And of course, Loki will have wrapped. So yeah. we'll be, caught, we'll be uh, touching upon Loki as well. Also. Let's go. Some great things. Three for sure. Invincible is the one that's the maybe. And the, yeah, the reason why scheduling is kind of tough is... Uh, we're, we're starting for sure with MODOK, 
But Black Widow comes out, I think, the 7th, and we usually record during that week. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. So it's just kind of like... We will see what happens. Eh, we'll see timing-wise how that works out. No matter but what, yeah, you will have mediocre podcasts released at some point. That's the plans. Is a series of one-shots because we've built up quite the backlog of things we need to watch. Media, but also like June is a an important month. They want to highlight and spotlight. Absolutely. Porque no los dos, as they say on that one commercial that I love so much. I love the commercial too. Is it? Who, who's the? It's who's the? I think it's Ortega. Ortega. It's Ortega. It's great. It's fantastic. But that'll do it for this. Um, where is John? Do you have the audio file? I can't find it for the that fun end joke we had. The you know the one that had a lot of production value and it cost us like thousand dollars to get done. And we had that cameo yeah, from John so Ham. We had to clear some space. Okay. So I uh, put it on a uh, flash drive and I archived it. Awesome. Can I? Can you just put it on the Google Drive for me and I can just use that? I I I, I archived it. No. Yeah. Totally. Um. So you can just uh, in Google Drive. There's an option to unarchive, where like you like download it from the cloud. So just, if you could do that, I can walk it through it if need be, and then we're good to go. I'm not. I'm not going to say no, but I have to go into the archive. Oh, you. Oh, and you, you don't know what it's the, like. You put it in the archive. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. Last time. I, I well, lost I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It's the whole thing. I know. You shouldn't have to go by that. I will I will go. Um hope this doesn't take too long. I will go get it. This really expensive, really great end joke that was written by Scorsese and has the cameo from John Hamm and it costs a thousand dollars and DJ Junkie XL did the music for it. I will go get it from the archives. And uh yeah, I I, I guess once I get it, we can just add it back to this episode and then we can put this episode out. Okay. All right. I will. I'll be back. John, can I borrow your musket and your Bowie knife for this? Because we know how crazy it is down in the archive. Yeah. Yeah. I can lend you, David. It's all good. Okay, great. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Well, I'll see you. See you when I see you. See you soon, TM. <laughs> that's, that's the podcast this week. It's dark in here. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Trades. Follow Jeremy on Twitter at Lizard King27. You can find John on Twitter at Maestro Laka, M A E S T E R L A K A. And for this and other projects from Matt, please check out Facebook at Matt Spina Music. And remember, we're not experts, we're fans.